Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have here to look at a Ford Mondeo. So I did come to look at this car before and uh, sorted out the DPF issue on it. Now we'll get back inside. I'm going to set up another Diag here and I'll show you what's going on with her. Okay, so it's got an engine management light on. It's done 140,000 miles. This is a 1.6 HDI or TDCI. So I did find some other issues with it while I was cleaning the DPF yesterday. And I'm back now with some parts that we can uh, do a little bit of diagnostic and repair on. Okay, we're ready to do a scan. So we're not worried about those faults. So what we have here is boost sensor circuit, fuel pressure regulator exceeded limit, pressure too low. And we've got the grill shutter as well. We're not here to do the grill shutter right now. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have time to do that, but we're going to sort out these two issues right here. So let's go in here. So if we have a look at the data for the turbocharger, let's have a look at what we have. So if we get these two items up here, we have 4.99 volts, 2.5 bar, full rev, up and down, doesn't make any difference. So we've got no response from the sensor. Now if we get off of these and go to the fuel, fuel rail pressure desired and the fuel rail pressure itself. And we'll get that manifold one off, just so we can concentrate on these two. Now what I'm going to do is go for a drive first, I'm going to clear the fault codes, so we haven't got anything here. Okay, so the, this code is staying, Servo, turbocharger circuit. So I think what I'm going to do is instead, well, let's just concentrate on one fault at a time. We'll go back to this uh, manifold pressure and boost voltage. So these are the two items we want to look at. So just over here at the back of the engine, we have the map sensor or boost sensor. Just going to take that off. Now we can see if we test the pins on here, we have 5 volts, and the next pin we also have 5 volts. So basically all of these pins are working, and we have an earth there. So let's get a new sensor here. Let's get that ripped open. We've got one here from Febby. There it is. Now what we're hoping to see is if we plug this in, we've tested all the plugs, so we know the plug is working. If we plug this in, we should see a change over here. We should get some sort of reading so the voltage should drop let's plug this in there we go so we no longer got um five volts and we've got a lower pressure also pressure also on the reading of the turbo there so i'm just looking at the old sensor here it looks to be in sort of a weird state I don't know what that is. What is that? Some sort of... Carbon, is it? It's just blocked up the sensor. That's what has happened. We may have been able to just clean that up, but I'm not going to risk that. I'd rather just put a new part on it. These sensors are very, very, very sensitive, they're easy to break. Chances are if you try and clean it, you're going to break it anyway. Now we can take this on a test drive and we should be getting the right readings here on the turbo side, but we've also got a low fuel pressure um, fault that when you pick up speed 
I've tried to reset that yesterday. I've also done a smoke test to confirm that we're not getting any sort of oil leaks. I think what's happened is someone's left the oil cap loose at some point, so it looks looks very wet and oily around there. Okay, I'm back in the car. Now what we're going to do is go back and try and clear that fault again. Okay, so we can see that now is cleared. So what we're going to do is look at the fuel rail pressure and the desired pressure. So the desired fuel rail pressure and the fuel rail pressure. We'll graft that out. Okay, now we've got the engine running. You can see there it's pretty close to where it wants to be. But when we take it for a drive, that does change. So we can see there we had it working for a little bit of a time and then we had a drop in the fuel pressure and we got a message up here saying service car now. Now we are back in limp mode. So the revs are now restricted again. So the revs are restricted, so the car is in limp mode. We don't have any engine lights on, surprisingly. And we've got that code back again, P228C. So the pressure is too low. I'm hoping that what the first thing to do there is, obviously there could be all sorts of issues going on. The, the high pressure fuel pump could be breaking down. The fuel pressure regulator could be breaking. The fuel injectors could have a problem. And But the first thing you want to do when you're doing something like this is change the fuel filter. So that's what I'm going to do here first. We've got a blue point fuel filter. Let's get it changed over. So the fuel filter now is over here. And you can just tell by looking at that it wasn't changed in a long time. So we're going to open it. All of these bolts here. We've got loads of 8 mil bolts. Just a couple of here holding this bracket on. Now we'll disconnect these fuel lines. We've got them disconnected here. Both of those. And then we've got two more little, or three more. Uh, two more, is it? One, two. Two more 8 mil bolts. So just like that, we have these filters swapped over. We're taking this one off. And we just fit the new head on with the little 15 mil torques there. A little bit awkward to show you that without um, using my hands. So with this being a diesel, you do have to bleed up the diesel fuel after fitting the filter. Okay, now that's done. We come back inside, we clear this fault code. Make sure that the fault code has cleared. And then we can take it on a test drive. Now that we have bled it up, I should do a start up now. A little bit jumpy there, but it'll clear out. So now we've taken it on a couple of miles, we can see the car fully accelerates, no restrictions. So that is a very good result there for the customer. We just changed that fuel filter and it has seems to have cured that fault. Now if we get the diagnostic machine back, we'll just read the fault codes to confirm it. Before if I drove to the end of the street, literally the fault would come back on here. And we'd get a little spanner sign flash up on here but it would disappear saying take your car for a service or a repair or something of the like. Um, so, it looks like we're all fixed. Everything is as good as it should be. Manifold pressure. And then the boost voltage. And we had fuel rail pressure. boost voltage so that should increase as you rev it there you go and then we've got the fuel rail pressure going up and down intake manifold absolute pressure you can see that increases when we accelerate it and there's your readings at idle well it now drives like a new car it's completely different to what it was when i got here so i'll see you on our next video